Welcome, friends. Today, we are continuing with our Zoologist First Impressions series. Delightful. And I have had to open a new pack. There seems to be three packs of eight. And I've obviously done four in the first video, then five in the second one, because cow came as like an extra. And I've done the first packet in. Now I'm starting on the second one, which contains bat, beaver, bee, camel, and four others, which are still in the packet, including chameleon. And chipmunk, civet, and dodo. So I'll be doing those next. Chameleon has some funky writing on it. It's got that crazy sort of like shiny writing. Per pearlescent, I think it's called. Holographic, I don't know, something like that. Anyway, here I am. So, I think it's been, I, I found it quite a rewarding experience so far. Um, I've been most tempted, if I'm gonna buy any of, I don't think I'm gonna buy any of the ones I've tried so far, maybe with the exception of moth and bat. I'm gonna I'm gonna test them further. They're going on skin. So the rest of them didn't really impress us to the point where I thought I'm gonna I'm gonna buy it. I was quite impressed with the quality and the sort of direction of them, you know. Um, I think it's a great idea. The more I'm trying them, the more they're winning us round. Do you know what I mean? Um, very interesting concept. And this line could just go forever because it's as, it could be as broad as the animal kingdom, which is just massive. Maybe one day I'll make human. I keep thinking of all these great ideas. I introduced these to like two women yesterday and one of them really liked cow and the other one didn't like cow. Um... I can't remember the other one. I think it was hummingbird or dragonfly. It was one of the two. I introduced them to that and they thought it was all right at first and then they thought it was rubbish. No, they didn't think it was rubbish. They just didn't like it. They didn't think it was rubbish. So anyway, I've waffled on. Which one shall we try first? Bat, beaver, bee or camel? I think we'll go in alphabetical order so we will go bat first so that i believe this is the second iteration of bat there was an original bat um and people said they preferred it but i don't know i've never smelled it so this will be taken as i find it i'm a big believer that the first the first version of something you smell will probably be your your favorite you know, um, because it's, it's its first impressions are extremely important. Anyhow, let's spray this. Let's spray this bat and see what it's got to, got to say for itself. Got these sprays of poverty. So, the notes are top notes, passion fruit, pink guava, fig and soil accord. Peter uses that in Centauri, soil accord, earth accord. Quite, it's it's interesting. Um, or maybe it's a maybe it's a soil tincture. I can't remember. It's something like that. It smells like earth. It's really good. Heart notes are hay, incense, minerals, minerals, which minerals? Night blooming jasmine. Base notes are animalic notes, which animalic notes? Leather, vetiver, mossy stones. It's interesting. Mossy stones, and teak wood. Wow, that's interesting. Smells like a fruit drink off the top. That's got to be the passion fruit, pink guava, fig. It does. It smells like a, it smells like a, not like Rubicon, but you know, like those, those drinks that you get that have got like outrageous fruits in from like the East. That's what this smells like, like an Indian fruit drink. It's nice. I like it. 
we will read the blurb. Mystical, mysterious murmurings glide upon a blanket of inky sky. Shadows smear across the moonlight, their darting journey shrouded in darkness. Bats, the only mammal capable of true flight, are, en are enigmatic and alien. Zoologist Bat escorts you on an odyssey through the night. This unique olfactory experience carries you with the fruit bat to a sumptuous feast in a lush tropical forest before whisking you down to the recesses of its carnivorous home. Cavernous home, not carnivorous, cavernous home. I beg your pardon. Sweet guavas and passion fruits ensnare you with addictive notes, then beckon you deep within the primordial mineral scents that evoke a rugged enclosure redolent with hints of damp soil and vegetal roots. Allow yourself to hang. Draped in pitch black, as the alluring musk wafts over you with every unfolding of the thousands of leathery wings that surround you. So, here is something to say about that, right? Minerals. Having smelled Ganymede by Marc Antoine Barrois, there is. There must be a new note being used at the like a new ingredient that gives off this this wet stone mineral metallic fresh sort of vibe it's 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 quite nice this i, I quite like it um the fruity top is very interesting because it's not the type of fruity top it's not like grapefruit. You know, it's drying down quite nicely as well, like for like the couple of minutes that I've had it like on the strip. Still fresh, still fruity. I like the picture too. Still a huge fan of the artwork. It's one of the reasons I keep the keep the pictures up on the videos like bat. It's got a crazy horn on his nose. Maybe that's his sonar. That's a really nice, fresh, fruity fragrance. It is very nice, that. It might be a little too fruity at the top for me. But if you like a little bit of fruit at the top, but it's, it's definitely got depth and there's more going on there than just like a fruity floral fragrance, you know? It's very nice. I like that. That mineralic note that's in Ganymede. I keep getting... It's not as pronounced as it is in, in Ganymede. There's more going on here. Um, I'm getting a little bit of the wood. A little bit of the um, vetiver. I don't say I'm getting any like jasmine or jasmine might be giving it that little bit of warmth. Soil accord. There is something a little bit earthy about it, but it's fresh. You know, it's not like it's not dingy. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got a dry throat. Like I do not want to be coming down with something. I'm going somewhere on Thursday and it would adjust my look to fall ill. Anyhow, we shall move on to Beaver. Giggity. So, let's see what Beaver's got to say. This is one that I think people have uh, crowed about. I know people have mentioned B before as well. Some people like B. Um, but I've heard people talk about Beaver too, so... Let's see what Beaver says. Again. These sprays work, but barely. So, we will talk about the notes. Top notes. Fresh outdoor air. Linden blossom. Wood shavings and wild vegetation. Heart notes are damp air, dry wood, light musk and water. 
I can see this is going to be quite a conceptual fragrance. Base note of amber, leather, castorium, dark woods, heavy musk and vanilla. And the perfumer is Chris Bartlett. Fresh outdoor air, yes. Linden blossom, yes. Wood shavings, yes. Wild vegetation, not quite. I'm sort of getting the first impression of something a little bit green. I do mean a little bit. Damp air, not quite, but dry wood, yes. Light musk and heavy musk, dear me. Water, kind of yes. Amber, no. Castorium, not yet. Dark woods, not yet. Heavy musk, kind of, and vanilla, a little bit. Right, this smells a bit like... Um, this smells a bit like laundry. Very strange. Very fresh. Totally different. You would have thought this would be castorium and skank, wouldn't you? <clears throat> or I would have, anyway. Um, sorry, I've got a really dry throat for some reason. Even drier than usual. Excuse me once I hydrate. Oh, I think the water might be making us more thirsty, strangely. Or it could be beaver drying out my throat. You know that way that like fresh, like like when the, when when you're doing an ironing and it can sort of take your breath away a bit, like dry your throat. We'll read what the blurb has to say. Zoologist Beaver invites you to slip away to a cosy family lodge. A tranquil river encloses the den in its rippling embrace as it glides beneath the blossoms of a lush lind of lush linden trees lining the banks. The breezy aroma of the green floral grove washes over you just before you duck and set duck just before you duck inside to be welcomed by leathery hints of musky castorium as it mingles with the moist woody note of freshly freshly hewn timber it strikes you just how sexy and dapper this perfume is and you sink into it letting yourself be enfolded in its surprising elegance it's very different to what i thought it was going to be fresh clean Musky, big musky stuff, linden blossom. I'm not entirely sure what a linden blossom smells like, but it smells like, the perfume smells like, you know, like the wood shavings. It's a very fresh wood. Excuse me. It's a very fresh wood, clean. No citrus whatsoever. Incredibly clean, laundry clean, like fresh laundry. This is insane compared to what I thought it was going to be. It's the freshest thing in the world. This is a huge surprise. How interesting. No skankier whatsoever. It's musky. It's woody. Very woody, very fresh wood, not like a cedar wood, just like literally like not any particular, like a nondescript wood, which can be taken both ways. You can, you can say that's a good thing, you can say it's a bad thing. Beautifully fresh, absolutely. If you wanted a, like a fresh, clean fragrance from the first impression, Beaver's beautiful in that way, you know? It's a very it's a very different take on a on a clean fragrance. Very musky, very like modern as well, you know? That surprised us massively. Very interesting. Next, we will try B. 
behold, if you will. So I've heard a lot of people talk about this. I don't know if this had an old version as well. It might have, but I'm not sure. We'll see. Oh, it's stained the paper. The colour of the juice is beige. So, the notes. Smell it in the air. Top notes, orange, ginger syrup and royal jelly accord. Heart notes are broom, heliotrope, mimosa and orange flower. Base notes are benzoin, labdanum, musk, sandalwood, tonka and vanilla. Right, so that ginger syrup, right? Straight away you get a syrup from it. Something extremely thick, sugary, dense and sweet. But not ethyl maltol. It doesn't smell like ethyl maltol, you know? It's not like an MFK sort of thing. It's more syrupy. Not resinous, syrupy. Thick, runny. Viscous, like if you got some on your hands, you would take it ages to get it off. Sorry, I'm gonna have to refill me water. My throat is absolutely dry. Oh, hmm. I brought an apple upstairs, I forgot about that. I don't know what royal jelly is supposed to be. This reminds me a bit of um, we call in this country like uh. Golden syrup. I'm sure you get it in like like America and stuff like that as well, or like in other parts of the world, but get the ginger aspect of it as well, you know. If you're gonna make like a ginger cake, you put like quite a bit of this in that. I get the floral aspect of that sort of you know when like bees when you get honey from bees, like vintage honey, I might do a video about how honey was a massive note in fragrances and how it's completely different now compared to what the how they used to represent it. Um, but this is, you get the floral aspect. You used to get the animalic aspect of honey in older fragrances. Now you get the more floral aspect, you know, like Cartier's Lone Vol. That's a very floral honey. This is more along the lines of Cartier's Lone Vol, but it doesn't smell like that, but the honey note, is along those lines much more so than a vintage honey note wow it's a really well done sweet perfume this i really like this the perfumer is cristiano canali i will read the blurb i forgot to do that the spring day seems still and peaceful yet Beneath the wildly splattered canvas of a blossom-strewn meadow, thousands engage in a desperate race for survival. Worker bees toil at a frantic pace, ferrying a precious cargo of nectar and pollen to deposit it within the cramped honeycomb cells, where it will, where it will nurture drones and larvae under the eye of a regal queen. Like the frantic hustle of the bee through a maze of multifaceted scents, zoologist bee delivers a surreal experience. The rich aroma of honey captivates while alluring florals, royal jelly, animalic beeswax and regal incense unite to create a buzz, offering excitement and the sweet rewards of life. This is very interesting again. If you like sweet fragrances, you should try this. It's very dark honey. You know how some honeys are darker than others? I think that might be the labdanum. Um, it's got some dark stuff in the base, like tonka, labdanum, benzoin. The floral, I think, I think, and this is a strange thing. I mean, obviously the ginger syrup and whatever this jelly accord is are doing like work at the top, big work at the top. But the, the, what makes this fragrance is the, the floral mid, heliotrope, orange flower, mimosa. Now, I don't necessarily like those notes, but when they're used with the top notes, the, the syrup 
something thick and jelly-like. It gives this contrast, you know, it gives this sort of like completeness to the fragrance. And then you've got stuff like Labdanum just making it dark. It's very well crafted. I really like this. I really like this. It's something that's like being made. Like it, it's something that's being made to evoke an experience. It really does give you that sort of thick, syrupy, gooey atmospheric it doesn't smell like an actual bee because bees stink bees have got terrible body odor it's, it's awful um but to evoke like the actual like environment of a bee floral syrupy thick dark busy very good and now we move on to camel by Christian Carbonell. We will see. Interesting. This one's apparently like I've heard people talking about this one too. I thought these fragrances were two hundred and seventy-five pounds for sixty mil, and they are not. They are a hundred and sixty-five and a hundred and ninety-five pounds. I was looking the other day because I was thinking. I've started like seeing how much a bottle of Hyrax might cost. Like I say, I showed it to a couple of ladies yesterday and they were not, not having it. Strangely, they said Hyrax smelled a bit like product cleaner. And I thought that must be like the saffron, like that tangy, fresh craziness. Anyway, Camel. Top notes are dried fruits. Frankincense, palm date and rose. Heart notes are amber, cedar, cinnamon, jasmine, myrrh, orange blossom. The base notes are civet, musk, oud, sandalwood, tonka bean, vanilla and vetiver. Dried fruits at the top, palm date, rose. Definitely get that. Bit of the cinnamon too. Incense, big incense, huge incense. Very rich, very dry. Very sheer, a little bit smoky. Let's read the blurb. On a trek through an unforgiving desert, starting point and destination are indistinguishable from one another. Terracotta hued dunes twist and writhe, their shapes ever shifting. Only the merciless sun and aloof constellations can be trusted to point the way. Weighed down by treasure, some tempting the eyes with their glittering sheen, others enticing the taste buds with their exotic aromas, the camel plods towards a far-off marketplace. Water is but a dream for now, the taste of sweet dates, a distant memory. There is nothing but an endless ocean of sand. Very dry, very starchy. I can feel it dry in the back of my throat. Like it's got a very strong incense. Dry and smoky. It's a bit like Bois d'Anson by um Armani, the Armani Prive. Fresh. Very drying. <clears throat> Excuse me. see why people would like this as well. I'm starting to get a little bit of the civet and the oud. Something just a little bit like a camel's got its nose too close to the, the camel in front of us. Something a, a bit animalic about this. Getting bits of the cedar. Bit of the jasmine. That's very, very dry. That's interesting again. 
These three are really good. These four are really good, I beg your pardon. That dried fruit at the top just just puts you off a little bit. Like just like like sends you down like the wrong trail. And then you have to find your way back and like the, the rest of the fragrance. Big contrast. I am enjoying testing these. I can't I can't lie. These are like really interesting, very rewarding. Um I will be sad when this is over. But I'm only halfway through already. This will be like the third video. I'm only halfway through. That's interesting. That's good. These are quality. So we'll go back over them quickly. And see what's happening. I'm going to try and keep this under half an hour if I can. Bat. Fresh. Incense, minerals, a little bit of leather, vetiver, wood. Get the minerals. Passion fruit still there. Fig. I'm not sure I would wear bat. In fact, I know I wouldn't wear bat. It's a little bit too sweet. But it's interesting. If you were looking for something a little fresh and sweet and nice, it's totally unisex. Um, you could do as I would highly recommend you got the sample set. It's fabulous. Beaver shocked me. This is a musk perfume. It's like a, a massively musky perfume, this. Like fresh, white, clean, dry. Madness, totally thrown us. Never would have thought it would smell like that. Bonkers. B. I really like that. It's the first time I've ever appreciated like the fact that labdanum is in the frames because it's the labdanum that's given the darkness to it. You know, you can get dark honey. It's got like more of like a lactonic sort of and I don't mean milky, I mean it's got this, you'll know what I mean if you smell it. It's like a burned, imagine like slightly caramelised honey. You know, you know when you make a ginger cake and the edges of it go like harder, you know, than the inside. That's what this is like, it's like the edge of like a ginger cake, it's, it's just, just a bit more, like, not crunchy, but, like, hardened around the outside. It's a really nice fragrance, that. Like, it's really good. You can see why, it, like, I'm sure, it, like, did it win an award? Oh, got an, the Art and All Faction Awards finalist. You can understand why people would put that up for an award. Absolutely. And then back to Camel. I know you haven't had enough time to dry down camel. Sorry about that. But you're dry enough. Oh, it's good. Fruit, incense, the contrast is there. Transitions, Eugene would say. It has got that little bit of filth, just a little bit that goes. So the frankincense is at the top. And then you've got the oud and the um, civet at the base, but somehow they're like connected. That's really nice as well. Oh, I'll try that on the skin. So I think from these four, I am going to be trying camel and bee on my skin. And with that... I shall have to bid you adieu. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you are enjoying the series. If you've tried any of these, let me know. I will hope to speak to you again soon. Goodbye, everyone.